gonna have a show first here on Better Buddies. Hello and welcome back to Better Buddies. I'm your host RJ, and with us this week we have a 128 episode show. First, uh, who wants to go first? Um, hi, I'm Lexi. I'm Caitlin. Uh, you are the first women on the podcast, so congratulations. Thank you. I'm so sorry for what is about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Our Better Buddies icebreaker this week: If Elon Musk is successful in getting himself and others to Mars. What do you believe would happen to Christians and non-believers located in the Mars colony if the rapture slash tribulation prophesied by the Bible happened while they were there? Submitted by Jay, last name withheld. Thank you, Jay. So, first question is, do you know what the rapture is? No. Okay. The rapture is the prophesied end of times in the Bible? Is it like 2012? Um, no, that was the Mayans. Well, it's similar, I meant. Like, uh, everyone no. dies into the world. Isn't this... It's, it's, in it's the reference... reverse into the world. Everyone lives. What? <laughs> is it that everyone lives, or isn't it in reference to, like, at one day the world will end, and, you know, believers go to heaven, and non-believers will go to hell? It's that. Uh, but, basically, everyone is brought back to life, but being alive currently does not put you to the front of the line. And they all go up to God, and that's all it says. <laughs> so you just go live with God? Yeah. Yeah, like, the people that have already died, like, okay. their souls are reconnected with their body in that, like... But does Mars count? No. Why? Because, okay, it was, like, the whole creation of, like, the God creation story says nothing about space. It's only God uh, created... First there so was darkness. So God created space and time. Well, he created... First there was darkness, then he created light. The sun. And then he created earth. So space was already there. So if God didn't create it, he has no control over it. So personally, I think if you're in Mars, you would not be a part of the rapture, but you could, like, be aware of it happening. So I think if you're, like heck a Christian and you wanted to be a part of that, they would just be pissed. So there's no... So Jesus doesn't apply to aliens? No. Damn. I mean... <laughs> suck, suck she aliens. cut them out. <laughs> I'm also, like, a recent non-Christian, so it's, like, figuring my shit out. No, I don't think God and Jesus applies to the rest of the universe unless you choose to bring your belief with you. Like, if you were born here and you believe, and then you want to bring that with you, I'm sure he'd still watch you, but if he's, if the rapture is just God's creation, I don't know if he has control over the other planets. See, I would argue, like, almost the exact opposite, because it's like, God created the heavens and the earth, and I know that the Bible explicitly references the earth, but at the same time, like, what, did God just decide, like, ah, I'm gonna insert a planet over here, like... Did, was he just like, let me like overthrow the solar system? Yeah, and he I'm just gonna made the Big Earth. Bang happen. So okay, but like, where did Mars come from then? Like, who made Mars? Satan. Oh, <laughs> Mars is hell. You heard it Why here first. Why do you first. think it's red? I don't know. Aries. Oh, who's that one? Good God. No, war. which one? War. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I that would make sense. Uh, the tenants of the rapture are that those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who are dead, aka just being alive doesn't get you to the front of the line. The dead in Christ will resurrect first, so if you believe you're in the front of the line for resurrection, but everybody does get resurrected. Okay. The living and the resurrected dead will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It occurs in the Perusia, those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And the meeting of the Lord will be permanent. So, everybody just goes up to Jesus. Everybody. Well then, well, then maybe. Would See, the aliens go? Sure. Would the aliens be a part of the rapture if we found life on Mars? I mean, I guess it depends what kind of life. Well, see, but the, the, the challenge of that is, like, it also then broaches the subject of, like, 
animals and like pets and whatever, they don't go to heaven because they don't have a soul. I hate that the Bible says that, by the way, because all that's, dogs go to heaven and that's a great thing. Um, sh- uh, check that. The dog specifically goes to hell. No, he goes to heaven. He goes to hell first. And then they send him to heaven because he's a dog. Mm. What, just being no, a dog okay. means you get to go to yes. heaven? No, that's the whole point, though. Is the he's... movie is called All Dogs Go to Heaven. Yeah, but the reason he's trying to do good is because he gets up to heaven. They're like, yeah, you were a shitty person. You're not staying in so heaven. So he went to heaven, and then and they then sent him back. And then back to hell. And he said, no, no, wait, give me one more so chance. So he still went so to he heaven. So he was going to go to hell. He still went to heaven. That doesn't mean he stayed there. Everybody goes to heaven and meets St. Michael at the Pearly Gates. And then they get banished to Balto Land. To where? <laughs> I only know Balto from, like, the Iditarod, so, like... You don't know the movie? <laughs> no. Oh, there was an animated kids movie called Balto. Oh, yeah, Balto, I know that. Yeah, Balto Land. <laughs> I don't, I... Where has this conversation gone? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I enjoy this. 10 out of 10. So, uh, Jay, if that doesn't answer your question, um... Good maybe luck. you're reading the Bible wrong. Everyone reads the Bible well, wrong. And here's here's the problem. Everybody thinks the Bible is the past. It's not. It's a future blueprint. Oh, I hate that. No, no, no. It, it, it'll make sense well, in about two not seconds. not for the Jews. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So, okay. as we're just, we were con- controversy on the point of whether Mars was included in the rapture or not, yes? I'm, I say it is. What if Earth is Eden? And Mars is the waste that Adam and Eve get banished to. So by creating Mars colonies, we are ex- that is the original sin, is leaving the garden. And then, by being in Mars, they have been exiled to the wastes. Literal wastes of Mars, because it is lifeless and dead. So who does this make Elon Musk if he's, like, trying to buy Mars? He's the snake. He, Jesus. He's the serpent in the garden. <laughs> he's not Jesus! I know he's He's not. literally the serpent in the garden, seducing people away from... I guess, Eden. Yeah. All right. And now he bought Twitter. Did, my mom was talking to me Did about he that actually today. Buy it? Yeah, most Did of he it. Actually, well, okay, he, he, is, he bought most of it and is offering to pay cash to buy the rest. He he has fourteen percent stock right now. I don't know. Controlling stock. And so he's the highest stockholder. So they basically have to listen to him. Yeah. Our next segment: <laughs> Better Buddies recommend, or we recommend a piece of media to enjoy. Lexi, do I, even, do I even want to know what you're going to recommend? Okay, I've been debating, and I kind of have two things I want to recommend. Can I do that? Yeah, go, oh, please, there are no rules here. All right, dope. So the first one is, like, actually legit. I just finished reading this book in class, and it's called Never Let Me Go. Yes! It's so good! I am emotionally ruined mm-hmm. by this book. Wait till the movie. Oh, I know. Fretz said I need tissues. Yo, you do. And it's I'm, Andrew Garfield and uh, what's I her know. name from Great Gatsby. I know. I'm gonna die. But like, so it's this book and it's about the school of children and them growing up and you watch like their lives and they figure out things about themselves. Like, I don't know if it's a spoiler to say it or not. It's a pretty Everyone, big spoiler. Yeah. So they figure some stuff about themselves and like how life goes and you just kind of like watch them grow up and kind of like fight for their humanity a little bit. It's very interesting, um, and it's kind of one of those books that, like, it's hard to explain, but if someone is like, oh, what's it about? You just tell them, like, go read it. Yeah. But once I fin- I read from chapter six to the end in one night. Bad idea. Oh, I sat in my room for an hour in silence, contemplating everything. I was so ruined, my heart felt, like, empty. This is a book that makes you ask, what does it mean to be human? Yeah. Like, the meaning of life is questioned, and the meaning of who gets rights. Would those characters get to join the rapture? (laughs) No, because we compared them to free-range chickens in class. Ouch. I know, it was a lot. Um, But great, great book. I recommend it if you want it. Just don't read it before, like, you have to do something important. Like, you're going to need time to process. Absolutely. And watch the movie. Oh, absolutely. The 2010 movie. What's your other recommendation? The other recommendation. Eat cheese. Um, do you want to define a little bit more? Because I think you had a... I was told there was a specific one you were probably going to do. So, I... Yes, there is. Um, first off, 
came into this podcast and I had a cheese stick and I called it my emotional support cheese stick. But my overall is you eat shredded cheese out of the bag with your bare hands. It is the best snack and I am not afraid to do it in front of other people. But most people are. But it's like, Is it frozen? No. Refrigerated. Why would you freeze cheese? It's a thing. That's weird. Either way, it's... If you're gonna eat cheese, at least, like, eat good cheese. Like, get a nice brie. Nah. Colby Jack, great value in a bag. Why are your taste buds so whack? Because I'm a very picky eater. I but, like, cheese. Yeah, but yeah. she's the same person who said that pears were... What did you call them? Okay, the pears... Carbonated or... The s- pears that were served were old, so they mm. tasted like they had carbonation, and carbonation burns my tongue. So these pears... The spicy of water? ...burned my tongue. So I said that they were carbonated, and everyone yelled at me. Because you were wrong, but okay. But there we go. My recommendations are an emotionally... Destroying book and a bag of shredded cheese. To support you emotionally as your emotions oh, yeah. are destroyed by the book. Emotional support shredded cheese, absolutely. So what if you eat the shredded cheese with a utensil? I eat it with a spoon sometimes. That seems it... like a terrible way to do Use a tongs. You're going to shove a whole tongs of cheese in your mouth. With little tongs. <laughs> yeah, you, like you little, little, ones. little ones. You get little toast tongs. Shredded cheese. That's all, okay, you'll get more cheese out of than a spoon. The spoon is like, it's full. Yeah. You, don't, you won't get any with the spoon. But you gotta get the, the thickly shredded cheese. At that point, just get a cheese grater and a block of cheddar. I own a pocket-sized cheese grater. So why do you buy the pre-shredded? Because her pocket-sized cheese grater is like an inch. Pocket-sized. Like, you could shred a Baby Bell little snack yeah. bite on that and nothing else. I'm also kind of afraid of it because it definitely came from a site that shouldn't sell cheese graters. Oh. So it's more or less a decoration than, like... Something I actually trust so myself to just buy to a use. cheese grater. They're like two bucks. They're so big and I have nowhere to put it. Hanging on a hook. I'm gonna have it as decor. <laughs> yeah, you bought a small one for decoration. You gotta you put point. a pair in. You know, what if my small one is for Gerald. Okay. And then we Who's have Gerald? matching cheese grater. My fish. No one else knows that. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a fish. His name is Gerald. So what if Gerald and I have matching cheese graters? There you go. And then you can buy nice, decent, good blocks of cheese to shred and eat good shredded cheese. With my fish. Sure. I wouldn't give the fish or cheese to I'm not going to give him cheese. No. Good. Caitlin, do you want to go next? Sure. <laughs> Mine is going to be completely different than all of what just occurred. <laughs> Um, I would hope so. <laughs> but I will say, okay, so I just finished season two of Bridgerton, and I'm not sure what the typical audience is here, so I am going to defend why I'm recommending this, okay? If it helps, I've recommended uh, Phantom of the Opera and uh, Pride and Prejudice. Okay, see? Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. I was told to watch that, and I still haven't yet, but I need to. If you want to watch Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, I own that. Or just watch the original. I think I'll start well, yeah. with the original well, yeah, before. Well, if you want to. Anyways. <laughs> with the zombies. No. Okay. So, but, like, it was so good. And season one was so good because it was, like, a slow burn romance. And then they got to it all. And it was great because it introduced, like, all of, like, the, like, courting and, like, everything that, like, it would go through from, like, both the male and female perspectives of, like, that time in England. And then season two... I just have to give them such, like, props for it because, so, some of the main characters that came in came from India. And so, they did so many, like, culturally relevant things as to, like, what they would be doing, like, in the nicknames, like, calling her older sister, um, it's Dee Dee, which is, like, relevant to the actual, um, like, location and, like, region of where they said that they were from. Like, that's something that is in their dialect. Like, that's what they would call them. Like, they did all those, like, names. She made actual tea. She made fun of English tea because she was, like, it's shit in comparison to, like, what we make. And then, like, they were just, like, they did such a good job of, like, subtly incorporating it into, like, the already, like, prominent English culture. And then they did, like, a really good job in just, like, 
they switched the characters, like, who's the star of the show. Like, they have, like, the main Bridgerton family, which it's very easy for them to do, honestly, because there's eight kids. So they just switched siblings. So season one was about one romance, and now season two is about somebody else doing their own thing. Yes. It's actually about, like, a couple different romances. Like, they picked a couple... Like, all the... There's multiple plot lines. The main plot line of season one was about the fourth kid, which was the first daughter, um, they also, so there's eight kids, they named them in, like, the alphabetical order going down. So, like, the first one okay. starts with A, and then B, and C, and Effective. D. So it was really easy to pay attention to, like, who's who, because you can't screw them up then. Like, after a couple episodes, like, you should kind of know all of those kids. But it was just really good in, like, it acknowledged, like, different cultures and different things, and, like, all of the things that, like, could be relevant. And then I just have to say I appreciate the fact that they took, like, current TikTok songs and made them into classical songs that they oh, played for the dances. Oh, man. <laughs> it sounded good. Some of them I didn't even notice it was happening until, like, in the back of my head, I was, like, I was, like starting to sing this lyric. And I was, like, why do I know this? Because, like, I mean, I grew up playing, like, classical piano and all of this. So it's not untypical for me to be, like, oh, yeah, like, whatever classical song is playing like I know it or I know the themes of it but like I was like why is my brain like singing dancing on my own in the back of my head while this song is playing but it got anachronistic and I don't like that (laughs) I don't even know if it's specifically the new songs being stuck in there or the fact that they're tiktok songs okay but I heard it was only like once I heard one of them and it was dancing like a stripper on violin. <sighs> I mean, I'm sure it sounds great. It does. It's just, it's just subtle and it's funny because it's not like every single song. Like, it's not every time that they have a dance or a ball and they're playing music. It's like some pop like song. Okay. But it's just like the couple times that they threw it in there. RJ looks so disappointed in me. It's okay. Not you. In the show. <laughs> They, it's, they, they had me, right? They had me in the first half. And then the, like, oh, by the way, we're going to TikTok song this shit. And it's like, you didn't need to. There's plenty of great music out there. You didn't need to do that. You already had a season two. But they were aware, of, they were aware of their audience. But that doesn't mean they have to stoop to the level of their audience. An attack. <laughs> it's, rel- it's fair, but yeah. <laughs> an attack anyway. No, I will say, I have limited my TikTok time, and it's a little harsh reality every time it goes your time limits up, because then I'm like, oh crap, I spent that much time on here. How much time do you allow yourself? Um, It's two hours between Instagram and TikTok, and so part of that is, like, one of my friend groups primarily uses Instagram for, like, our group chat. Uh Uh-huh. So, like, if I leave that open, Mm. it's there. But you know, it, it's at least an amount I I can say okay, I'm fine. Like yeah. I was a little worried it was gonna be like four or five hours. No, and I don't hit it every day, but like when I do, then I'm just like, ooh, what did I do? Okay, I have two recommendations this week: one small one, one real one. Uh, first one was Shazam. I watched the Shazam movie. It was. One of the better DC movies, the teen boy getting the body of a like grown man had the fun, awkward montage of, yes, one finest beer, please, and the scene where he goes into the strip club and then comes out and a friend's like, oh, tell me about it, and like, all, or like later on, because, you know, check out strip club, you show a strip club in the first half, first third of the movie, it's going to show up in the second, th- the later third, uh... All the kid, like he's in a foster home, and all his siblings are like running away from the bad guy in like the magical place, and he, they're like, "Oh, we gotta get out of here!" And he gets them out, and then that, it cuts to the like front of the strip club as they're all running out, and the like girl who's about to go off to college is carrying the seven year old and covering her eyes, and of course you have to have the joke of, "Oh, was there glitter? I like glitter. That was fun music." But the kid can't see anything, so they have no idea what's going on. So the innocent comments are actually horrible. And, so, like, there were some awkward, like, cringy moments like that, but overall, like, the guy who from Kingsman, Arthur, is the, or Merlin, sorry, Merlin's the main villain. I like him. So, like, he did a really good job. Zachary Levi did a good job at, like, playing a 14-year-old boy. So, overall, it was good. 
The biggest fucking twist, though, when it comes to orphan stories... So I know comics generally, but I don't know a ton about Shazam, beyond the fact that he was originally Captain Marvel, and DC bought him up from whoever had him, and Marvel said, no, you can't do Captain Marvel, because we have, like, five. And they said, okay, fine, we're calling him Shazam, even though he can never name his own name, because that's the word that turns him into Shazam and out of Shazam, but fine. Uh, but Billy Batson, the kid who is Shazam, is an orphan. And in the beginning of the movie, he gets lost at, like, a winter carnival thing, and they're, it's like, oh, he can't find his mom, and she never comes back for him, and he's trying to run away and find her constantly when he's, like, 14, and he finally finds her near the end of the movie, and he tra- like the, the, his foster kid siblings like help track her down. They give him the address, and he goes there, and she's just like, yeah, I was, like, 17, and I just didn't want you anymore, so uh, oh, I, I hope you're doing good. She was at the strip club. <laughs> Whoa! I, I don't know if it's worse. Well, you said it kept popping up, so I was sitting here like, ooh, she's at the strip club, she's a stripper. It, they do an implication that she's like, like she just abandoned him. Dad was in prison for a decade, and it's implied she's in a new, still, like, pretty shitty relationship, and she literally is just like, you just, you just find me to, like, let me know how you're doing? And he's like, yep, yep, I'm doing good, and he leaves, and it's like, Damn movie, you had no right to do this. That's right. <laughs> but rough. you did. So, like, that was too emotional for the level the movie had been at for the rest of the time. But overall, it was a fun movie. Real recommendation. John Wick 2. I, I finally watched... Well, I, this is the first time I watched the second one. After watching the third and first one. You skipped around? I started with number three in the theaters. Oh I think he gosh. told us this before. And then a few weeks ago, I watched number one. So now I had to watch number two. Don't you own it? Yeah, that's why I watched it. Okay. You own it and you still I watch I bought them in first. that order, too. Oh my gosh. Jeez. See, okay, so I watched three, and then the Walmart movie bin, for like five bucks, had three, so I bought three. And that's a couple fair. weeks ago, it had the second one, so I bought the second one. And then the first one was available, so I bought that, too. And then I watched the first one. And then I watch the second one. And everything makes so much more sense now. <laughs> I would bet. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not... Okay, to be fair to, like, the cr- the crafting with John Wick, going into the third one, I was expecting, like, oh, it's John Wick, action movie, guns, you don't need to think about it. And so just diving in, they because it's the third one, nothing is explained. And it's just like, oh, John Wick killed someone on the grounds of the Continental, and now he's excommunicado, and everyone's gunning for him, and he has to find the man above the table to be forgiven. And so he goes on an adventure across the world to be forgiven. And there's, like, the King of New York is a hobo man with a hobo legion who, like, they sit around looking like homeless, but actually they're super effective and have guns and shit. And it gets through this whole thing, and, like, they don't explain anything in the third one, and you're just like, yeah, okay, I accept this as reality. Having now seen one and two, that's just the franchise. Entirely is... Here is stuff accepted as reality, because the first one sets up nothing beyond there is a secret organization of assassins, and crime uses these weird gold coins to pay assassin services, and various cleanup services and things. And then out of nowhere in number two, they say, oh, by the way, there's a hotel, there's like all these things that also are going on, such as different continental hotels across the world, and there is the table, and these people who have seats at the table. And you're just kind of like, okay, cool, so now there's a table. and <laughs> But having watched three, I knew the table was a thing. It was already set up for me, because I watched the third one. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I just want to know that RJ is someone who will yell at you. Not yell at you, but he will chastise you if you skip the ropes of a line. Like, you know, at, like a, like, at somewhere that you're getting food, he'll yell at you for not following the ropes that put you in line. But here he is, endorsing the fact that he watched movies out of order. I create the chaos, I control the order. I'm gonna say that next time, and I'm gonna step over a rope. You go under the rope. Fair. No, I'm gonna step over the rope. I stole that one from a movie trailer. You and what legs? (laughs) Damn. (laughs) I have a couple inches on you, so... (laughs) You're right, you're right. (laughs) Plus, they're they're, they're like the stretchy ropes. Oh, the yellow ones? Yeah, Yeah, they just go through it. Okay. Move it down, get over it. Like, I made a friend by doing that. No, the yellow ones go actually, like, through it. Like, there's a hole drilled. Oh, those? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just go around. And then walk in front of everybody else and cut the line. That's what no. you're doing! <laughs> no, no, you're if not! if no one's there, then that's you go the under all the ropes. If no one's you... there, go around! Then you don't have to worry about trying to, like, jump a fucking hurdle. I don't no, jump. Now I'm just gonna do it. What, you go under? Just, yeah. Okay, so stop limboing. I like limbo. It's I a good game. I made a friend in middle school by going over a rope because we were both going like this direction and it was like the way you had to do it because like it was a football game and everyone was kind of in the way of the sidewalk so I went over and at the same time she chose to go under she was taller than me so like by me choosing to go over I assumed she was going to step over because it was not a tall like rope and I she was wearing flip-flops and somehow in this whole process of it or whatever I broke her shoe Oh. And she was, like, an acquaintance friend. Like, I had met her. Like, I knew her in one class kind of friend. And so then I had to give her my shoes. when wait, she wait. No, when she went into the bathroom. Okay. Because she was going to, into the bathroom. And I she, like, couldn't. She was, like, hobbling around on this, like, broken shoe. And that is how we became friends. And we're still friends. I mean, it's. Be- I was a little afraid it was going to be, oh, she went under, I went over. We both, like, tripped each other up and broke our noses or something. No, no, I just broke her, you know, $1 Old Navy flip-flop, but I felt so guilty. Like, I I still apologize. Well, I just let her borrow them, oh, okay. like, to go into the bathroom. Like, we just switched, like, I stood outside, like, with her one good flip-flop and her other broken one. <laughs> she couldn't hop on one foot? Okay, the, it, it's a football stadium. Those yeah. bathrooms are dirty. So the only no. reason I go to, into the bathroom during football games in high school was because the bathroom was the only heated place. So when you were really cold, you went and stood in the bathroom. Fair enough. Yeah. I was I was in band, so like the uniforms kept us warm. We were good. Yeah, I was also in band. I was, this was not. In nerd. Not in band. Lame. <laughs> I was in show choir. Thank you. I feel like that's worse. <laughs> it is. I'm sorry. Oh, it definitely is. Like, Don't because... Well, with the asterisks of depending on your music program. Okay, yeah. No, Okay, cause... it made you cool in my high school, because we didn't have a dance team or a cheerleading team. Mm. So if you could dance and you could sing, you were on this team, and we would go, like, win competitions and get trophies for our school. So you were actually good. So, we, like, no, yeah. No or yeah. She, she's trying to be nice, but yes. <laughs> yes, we were really good. Okay, there we go. During my time there. There you go. There. Yeah. As it does. They went yeah. downhill after she graduated. They, yes, honestly. She's after, the star of the show. It was the two grades above me, my grade, and the grade below me. So once my grade left, we were stuck with a good grade and a shitty grade. Yep. And now it's just like shitty grades that when they got to high school, they tried to take over all the programs and we were all like you are children stop and now they're coming up and still being little shitty assholes so they're just kind of ruining the program but it's fine because i'm out of it yeah but my brother is still around it and my friend's little brother is gonna be a freshman so i'm kind of getting dragged back in that's fine nah just burn it down some of my friends have never left high school all right just burn them down (laughs) No, I was that person that, person. Like, literally after graduation, like, I unfollowed people. I no, stopped I did talking to people. Like, if we were not, like, actually friends, like, if I wasn't going to call you in a crisis, like, I am I did not stick around with keeping oh, up I'm, with them. I'm one of those people who has to have the Rolodex of, like, I know a guy, so I can just pull back, like, hey, remember high school? Listen, you were a plumber now, like... <laughs> Can you help me out? I talked to, like, five people from high school. Two of them... Well, one is because my brother is best friends with his brother. And then one, we're going to work together this summer. So, like, we were good friends at the beginning of COVID. Then we, like, fell off. And now we're going to be friends again. And then I have two best friends from high school. And then, like, the occasional other person that, like, I have a streak with or something. So, like... There's, like, only, like, five or six people that, like, I partially actively talk to from high school. Oh, yeah. And everyone else can just suck it. <laughs> everyone I talked to from high school is on this podcast at some point. That's well, funny. our next segment, How to Be a Better Buddy, where we give some real and some humorous advice. Our first question this week, what's a male stereotype that you hate to admit you fall into? All right, as a female, <laughs> <laughs> I... Whenever I have to play a male character, 
like my current D and D character, his name is Chad, and every time I play a dude, I always fall into the bro. Bro. Like just bro, bro. Bro just for real. Absolutely, like idiot bro football player. Like bro, it's okay. Just like follow your heart. Like bro. you're good, bro. All right. <laughs> um. Okay, so I don't know how this fully counts. So, like, my parents only had girls, all right? Like, it's me and my sister, that's it. So they were always like, you will be independent. Like, they had their kind of idea for my, like, life of, like, the order of things, you know, like, school, like, college, like, get yourself started, like, be financially stable, that sort of thing. So now, (laughs) like, I will go out with my boyfriend and I, like, have the urge to pay, Every time. I will fight him <laughs> for the check. Heck yeah. I nice. am the person, like, I I went <laughs> I went over the summer to, like, a bachelorette weekend, and one of my best friends, we all had reservations, and she called ahead and put her card down so nobody else could pay at the restaurant. Ooh. Which That's a bro move. I disagree with, but also, like, for future reference, that is, like, the smartest thing ever. I was like, yes, you put your card down. Like, if you say you're going to pay, like do it so now i'm just like holding that in the back of my head as like a thing like i will do at some point to somebody because like i just, just I fight for the subvert check subvert the game like you it's win before even, they can play it's not even that it's just like it's a mix of like the being like stable and like financially stable or like being able to like pay for that and then it's a mix of like i'm just trying to be nice so i'm like yeah like you, like, you came with me. Like, oh, we're going to get lunch. Like, of course I'll pay. Like, I'm just like, yeah, let me take over. Yeah. But well, then he's the same way. So then we get into fights with it because he's like, no, I should be paying. And I'm like, no, I'm going to pay. And he'll never win now because you have this ultimate move. I know. This, and he doesn't know it. But that, you have to hold on to the to me too. I completely understand that because I'll go out with my friends and my boyfriend. And I'm, I'm like, okay, you cannot afford to pay for both of us right now. I can pay for myself. And he's like, no, if I, do, if I don't pay for you in front of your friends, I'm going to look like a dick. And I'm like, you won't. But like, I get how that's, like, a thing. Like, a, I'm like, I can pay for myself. It's fine. My friends pay for themselves with their partners. Like, it's fine. The male stereotype, I hate to admit I fall into, but I will admit it openly and freely, is the bachelor diet. Everything I make is just comes out of a box and is frozen. I didn't know what the bachelor diet was, so I was sitting here waiting for you to be like no. some like a like a frozen meal, but like you know the frozen microwave ones, and yeah. then just like beer. Like I don't know uh, why that's frozen. That's head. beer is reserved for non work nights only. That's fair. Uh, yeah. But I have I instead get those like fifty sixty cent like uh, flavored water things at Walmart. The like. I don't know if they're a liter or like a half liter or whatever, but I'll just like drink oh half God. of those in a night. I was about to hit you with a, ah, oh, me too. I mean, it's because we're in college. You graduated. Yeah, I'm not in college. You don't have an I, excuse anymore. No, yeah, <laughs> I got no excuses. <laughs> I'm just single and eating like pizza rolls for a meal. <laughs> My boyfriend's not single and he can't feed himself, so don't worry. Stereotype. I taught him how to boil water for pasta. I figured out what I was doing wrong with that. Uh, guess who forgot that putting the lid on traps the heat and makes it happen faster? <laughs> I don't put the lid on just because it's a personal thing. Yeah, if I, I don't like do that, it takes me an hour. Here? Yeah. How? You need to get I your don't stove know. checked I just out. Know that, like, do you turn your stove on high, like power boil? I, I, cr- I crank the thing as much as I can, yes. I don't know, I can't... I, think you I don't just know if it's a stove, I don't know if it's the pots, or whatever, but like the minute I like... I was literally, like, I had the water boiling. It had been going for, like, a half hour or, like, 20 minutes or whatever. And I, like, was just scrolling internet trying to see if I was doing something wrong. I was like, oh, huh. Put the lid on to trap the heat. Duh. I put the lid on, like, two minutes later, it's overboiling. I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, but you figured it out, and that's what matters. Now I just have to remember for next time. Can you brown beef? Like, can you cook ground beef? Can you cook ground beef? Yeah, I can cook ground beef. He couldn't until I taught him. Oh, my, oh. So he probably can't season it either. Seasoning? What's that? Okay, I, I have introduced him to seasoning okay, salt. I'm making fun of him. I have uh-huh. introduced him to Lowry seasoned salt. Okay. So he can. Because it's a mix in one thing. That is true. That's like the and easiest thing you That is the thing easiest thing you, thing you can do. I mean, yes. 
Except his mom doesn't buy it because his mom's a really good mm. cook and she like she's also keto. Oh, okay. So it's like she has all the really cool like spice stuff and like she'll make soups and stuff, but like that's not what he's gonna eat. I mean, he, he can never listen to this what, podcast because he can't thinks be when I call him out this. Like if Those his if there is food in the house. <laughs> I fully acknowledge, like, I can cook, I just choose not to, it's on me. <laughs> yeah, he can, he just chooses not to. Um, our next question. How did martial arts change you as a person? With the further details, did you feel a change in behavior? Oh, absolutely. Me and my absolute lack of martial arts. Uh, I never did it. <laughs> the only relevant thing that I have to say about this is, and I can't remember the show now, it was a Disney... Kicking it! Kicking it, oh yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the only thing. I knew thing. we were going to talk about. I can okay, talk about. Okay, I actually about. took a class. I took, self def- I, I took a self-defense class that my dad forced me to take before college. And it made Fair. me way too confident in my abilities to beat someone up. Because I have <laughs> no skills. You yeah. have some. You have more than some people. You, you I can something. choke someone out with my thighs and possibly okay, Black Widow. figure shit out. But that's it. Hey, that was one of the first things they taught me, and I was like, yes. I took a week-long summer school course <laughs> in karate. How when old were you? Seven. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only other thing I have to... My boyfriend's a black belt, and that's the, that's the only other thing I can commit to this. What? Yeah. So, he yeah. Was, like, he was in, like... Have you you have he seen was him, like in right? eighth grade? Yeah. Okay. Dude, he's so strong. Do you strong. just imagine that? He's kid. so strong. I'm picturing it as one. Of those, I don't think like, you can understand. He can grab yeah. a door frame and do pull ups. It, it's the like with uh, ease. It's Iro in Avatar: The Last yeah. Airbender, where like he's in prison and he looks like an old fat guy, and then he takes the pillow out from under his shirt and he's just doing <laughs> like one hand and push ups. <laughs> I just like there you can't go, imagine him. I well, mean, I can in middle I, school. I can and I can't imagine him kicking someone's ass. It's just like, it's such a situational thing for my imagination here. <laughs> my time in martial arts changed me. Did it? <laughs> Did <No>. it? <laughs> who is this question for? People who do martial arts. <laughs> Did you come up with these? I find them online. Okay. Did any of your friends do martial arts? About the same amount as I did. So there's no reason for this question. So, other... but like, can you it's break helping. a board in half? If you got, if I got a saw or a rock, I can disarm really someone hammer. with a knife and a gun. Well, yeah, if you have a knife and a gun, they don't have anything. No, with, I can disarm someone who has it. I don't have it. But if they're threatening me, I was taught how to disarm. Is it them. a knife gun? Yes. <laughs> it's okay. got a bayonet. Okay, so what pistol. you? But like politely, what are you gonna do when you get shot? Like, or can you still disarm them if you're bleeding from somewhere? Oh, that's where the disarming comes from. You lose yeah, it in you, the process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I took this class, like, two summers ago, and I haven't gone back since. But See, I have one pink stripe on my belt. All right? I don't think I could ever take these classes because they're, you know, I get the purpose of them. And, like, I do find the appeal in taking it. But at the same time, like, they're like, oh, you can do this if someone has a knife or a gun. But they're probably going to hold a little bit still or a little bit whatever well, to, like, let you learn and do it. And I'm like, all right, but they're going to shoot real fast. So what you have to do they is you take all of that days. and become a vigilante. <laughs> they have practice days where they actually come at you. Okay. So, like, so this... It was so a- if, you, if you don't move fast enough, they just cut you? No, they're, fa- they're rubber knives. Um, well, they're rubber knives. But, like, but do they're they the size yes. and, like, but feel are, of an but actual like, knife. But, like, 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 do they hit you with it and they're like, okay, you just got, like, sliced. Yeah. Okay. I was, That's I was fair. Never, yeah, so it was, it's through J- Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and they have a women's only program mm-hmm. uh, to get a pink belt. It doesn't exist anywhere else. Ever. In, yeah. So it's only for self-defense through this one, like, program. Neat. Um, so the pink tax. It's, <laughs> what? She it's actually the pink it's belt. Actually, it's actually cheaper than and other classes. And they classes. just target women for everything that's for women. Absolutely, has to be I pink. need to start buying men, men's racers. But anyways, so like, I've, you go in every week and you would learn something different. And you can start at any week. You'll just start at a different move. Mm. Okay. So I could go in once and then miss a few weeks and go in again, and I would learn the same move. It depends on what was in the rotation. And then every like four or five weeks, they would have a practice course 
where you would come in and you would practice all the moves you have learned in more of a realistic way of like they'll come at you and you don't know what they're coming at you with so you have to figure out what you're doing. Was there a lot of like self-discipline and like mental strength and like no, this following is, rules? Or no, is this, this is just all like, self-defense. So it's not really martial arts then, is it? You're using jujitsu to mm. be self-defense, but it wasn't the... Mm. Hiya, yes I wouldn't sir. call it an art. Karate, it's, it's like not. A... <laughs> okay, it was martial. There you go. It was martial. <laughs> it was martial. But it was more of like a safe place for women. The only man in there was one teacher, and then the assistant teachers were also women. And they're actually having a woman... Or when I was there, she was testing to become the leader, so it would be a women only. So it was a safe place if you had been assaulted, if you had been whatever. Nice. So it was actually pretty dope. What were they going to do with the guy? He just goes home. <laughs> no, he, he owned the place. Oh. <laughs> oh, so he doesn't even have to work anymore. He just owns it and ranks in the, those bucks. And, and he, he does, seems like, real the... considerate for women. No, he <laughs> seems right. Well, he taught it, and he, he was very nice. He yeah, actually, he has he actually to has another job. He works with Your my pain. mom. Mm-hmm. He works with my mom. So yeah. he has another job. Profiting off women's pain. Okay. I learned some helpful skills, but okay. I am sure people are walking out of there with bruises that equates pain. That mean, and he is profiting from those classes. Therefore, he's profiting off women's pain. Okay. Am I wrong? He's also the profiting off of sound. men's pain in the yeah, men's Yeah, because they class. can't go the classes. Oh wait, he's a, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Our next question. It was question. one class a week. All the rest of the classes. Our next were question: going. How did you take the first step towards being physically fit and turn it into a routine? I'm sad. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let's answer the question. Keep, keep talking. <laughs> like, I just become sad about myself, binge too much food, go work out once, and then repeat the next three months. I'm not physically fit, but that's what I do. That's my routine. I'll go to the but gym once every, like, three months, once I feel bad enough about myself. You have an actual routine. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, How did I take the first... Oh... I think it honestly, like, started in COVID, and I was just really, like, bored, and then I realized that, like, I, all I was doing was sitting in my house, and, like, I, I love my parents, but, oh, dear God, they were getting on my nerves, like, I was getting on their nerves, like, we, we are a close family, but we were too close at that point, so I just started, like, running outside, because I was like, get away from them, (laughs) like, for a little bit, like, at least just get out of my house, and so then, like... It's definitely different with school here. Like, this semester, I've been really good. But, like, last semester or, like, last year or whatever, like, honestly, like, if I was just busy, I was like, eh, whatever, I'm not going to do anything. And I would also like to cite that I have the problem of being like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. I'll just do yoga. And I tell my brain as if that's not actually me doing something. (laughs) And I'm, like, I've started to acknowledge him and be, like, no, that's still, like, you're still doing something for yourself or, like, doing something nice. But I'm, like, somehow I tricked myself into being, like, ah, if you do yoga, it's not really working out. I mean, whatever gets you working out, though, like, if you trick your brain into thinking that's not working out and then you just do, like, a metric fuck ton of yoga, that works out. Yeah. I will say, like, going to the gym now, like... Because I, like, bike, and then I do, like, I switch, like, it's either, like, push-ups and, like, something. Like, it's not, like, weights, but it's, like, moving, like, calisthenics, like, moving your body. So, okay. like, building your muscle, but, like, just off of kind of, like, what you naturally have, like, toning more so. Um, but then, like, every time now I go to do yoga instead, I, like, lost balance almost. Like, oh. I don't even know. Like, you'll go, and it'll be, she'll be like, okay, so, like, pull, f- like, move up from this into like a different pose and my like legs are like oh my god what are we doing and like literally sometimes i'm just like falling all over the place and i used to be so graceful and i don't know what the hell happened (laughs) but i'm like all right like it feels fake (laughs) for me it's tracking as soon as this like a year ago i started tracking everything i was doing and even in the winter when i stopped doing jack shit and ate horribly i kept tracking it so now as i'm like getting back into it i'm like okay keep tracking it's a routine uh and my workout is the, like, the best way I can describe it is the brick workout of, not like I'm getting super jacked or whatever, just the, like, simple, basic steps of push-ups, sit-ups, run. Yeah. But that's, like, honestly, I feel like those are some of the basic, like, you see, like, those videos of, like, 
the, what are, like the CrossFit people oh, or like CrossFit. all these like all, I mean like there's so many options and they're all like crazy almost like yeah. they're doing all these like insane things and they're like this is what I have to do to like have like a toned body or like to build muscle or whatever and I'm like I feel like that's a lot more than what you actually like I feel like there are just basic things that you can do I mean, to like be fine. Depending on what you're aiming for, if you're just aiming for weight loss, the end res- the end like calculation is more calories out than calories in. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and worst case scenario, just uh, as Lexi said, just t- go once every three months. Apparently, it works. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the money out of my gym pass. <laughs> you're not. I'm not. <laughs> Unless you consider like. A hundred bucks a session getting your money's worth. <laughs> I went a bunch last semester. Mm-hmm. And then I went a few times this semester, so, like, it's maybe been, like, 20 bucks a session. So, like, it's not... It's not it's bad, not but, like, it's not worth it. Our next question. What are some good conversation starters? With the further details, what are some good conversation starters I can ask my dad... To find out more about him, I'm really quiet and want to try and connect more with my dad. I'm 26, he's 61. Have you tried using the icebreakers from this show? Have you asked him if he thinks the rapture would affect Mars? You got a point there. Cake or pie? Um, specifically dad questions, I guarantee you that he knows something about some war in American history, and he will want to talk about it. So just ask him what his favorite war was, and he'll probably know some fact about it. Or you, like, figure out what he really likes and say a really unpopular opinion and get him on a tangent. I did that last night with some friends, and I said a really unpopular opinion about Star Wars, and they just went off. What did you say? (laughs) Okay, so I said this is a joke. But? But I said that three was the best, followed by one, and that four was underrated. How could four be underrated? It's literally the first one that kickstarted the whole thing. I stand by what I said. Not really, because I said it as a joke and they all yelled at me. As they should have to a degree. Exactly, but see, now it's getting you onto something and I'm learning, like... I don't know, or I'll just send my dad TikToks or ask him how to fix my car. I, I have a question. Hey, you're 26. How have you not learned jack about your dad at this point? You had 26 years to try. Um, the dad also had 26 years to try and connect with the son. You don't know Um, what their life was like. It could be the son wasn't listening. He's, the guy's 61. He's, depending on how many kids he's got, he's had stories. And if it's anything like my, like the patriarchs in my family, patriarchs, yeah, patriarchs in my family, we repeat stories. Here's the thing. I can understand where he's coming from because my dad went through this with his dad because it's like... There was a ton of stuff, his divorce, blah, blah, blah. His parents went off to find themselves after their divorce, and he was left. Um, So my dad, up until the day his father passed away, was, like, really trying to get a relationship with him. No matter what he did, his father would not reciprocate anything. So there was nothing there, no matter how hard he tried. And my dad doesn't like small talk necessarily all the time. He tried talking in big talk. (laughs) <laughs> he did thank you like he would go fishing and he would do stuff that his dad liked but his dad never reciprocated in doing stuff that he liked mm. so like i understand how even though you're 26 and your dad's 61 like that can be a really difficult thing to like try and figure out so definitely like a lot of simple questions and doing things that your dad likes to do even if you don't necessarily like them could be a gateway to something else Mythbusters. just watch Mythbusters with him everybody likes Mythbusters. or um what's the what's the knife show I don't know the knife show because it's not Mythbusters. Um, what's the what's the trading show or the the pawn shop pawn stars? Pawn stars. Pawn stars? Yeah, those that's a forged in fire. Oh, forged in fire. Forged in fire is a, oh my gosh, my dad adores that show. Uh, my dad watches some show about truckers up in like Alaska or something, and like ice road truckers. Yeah, <laughs> wherever go. that is. <laughs> You just gotta find the dad show that your dad connects to, and then you connect to it, and then you will have this common ground. Send your dad TikToks. Don't do that. You're 26, don't do that. I send my dad TikToks, and my dad sends me, and my boyfriend TikToks. Not in a chat with me and my boyfriend and him. My dad will text my boyfriend directly TikToks. So. (laughs) 
Moving on, because I'm too old for TikToks. <sighs> Our next question. What's the worst that could happen? Please don't ask me this. Death. Or worse, being expelled. I was literally <laughs> gonna say, like, I relate to Hermione on that. Um, I am... <laughs> I'm oddly okay with my own death. <laughs> I have so come to terms with that. Like, oh, whenever yeah, it happens... you could be in an internal torture first. What? You could be eternally tortured instead of dying, and that would just be so much worse, because you're constantly in pain. I think I torture myself enough. Nobody else needs to do that to me. Well, we were just asking what was the worst that could happen. I, I would argue eternal torture is worse than death. Yeah. A dog dying. I don't think that's worse than death. I'd rather die than see a dog die. Uh, mm. Yeah, I stand mm. by what I said. I mean, fair, but also, like, I love a dog. Don't I get me wrong. I would risk my life for my dogs, and they are absolute idiots. Don't get me wrong, I agree. But having watched a dog die, I, I would not say that dog dying is worse than my dying. I've seen mo Okay, I've had dogs pass away of old age, but, like, if my dog is about to get hit by a car, I'm going to go shove my dog out of the way, and I will get hit by that car, and I don't care if I die or not, because I do not want my dog to get hurt. Right. Yeah, I'm too cynical to have to agree with that one. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. I was the four year old who, when like the kitten died, my sister was crying, and I went, "I'll go get a shoebox," and I was so excited Damn. because no, because I had just gotten new shoes, so I was so excited Damn. because I was like, "I have a box in the house." Caitlin. It was a farm. Okay, we knew I the mean. circle of life very early on. It was not something that was, like, sugar-coated of, like, oh, like, they just, like... But you don't have to be excited else. about death. I wasn't excited about death. I was excited about mm. the fact that I could help. Death? No, that I could help, like, my <laughs> parents and everything. Like, I had a box. She had a box. I was so excited. Why are you not becoming a coroner? <laughs> I could not become a coroner. Because I am not good enough at the sciences. I am good enough to get an A when I'm in the class. I am not good enough to pursue that as a career. So, just make boxes. Just so just on the boxes. TikTok, <laughs> do you see those people who um, re-put together people's faces after they've been, like... A, a mortician? Yeah. So, like, there's uh, this girl oh, okay. who goes to, like, mortician school. Wait. Mortician or the, like... Reconstructing the from reconstruct ancient bones. No, mortician. Okay. So, like, someone who, like, gets their face sliced open or something. Okay. And then they have to reconstruct it for an open casket. Oh, that's rough. Those are really... They practice on, like, fake faces. I mean, yeah, but, but like, it's, it's like... really cool to watch. I would want to be one of those practice dummies. Like, if I had a friend that was doing that, I would volunteer to, like, let them, like, you know, do the makeup uh, or whatever. On, you have your you face chopped open. You just volunteered to have your no. face cut up. So no, you, you just volunteered it. to have your face chopped open. That's what she's talking about. Okay, that's not what I was talking about. That's what I was you talking about. You mean the, about. like, letting the I mean mortician the... do the makeup yeah, after well, they fix okay, the face? Okay, but then they have to fix the face first. So Okay, well, I Caitlin, just want to volunteer to have, by, like, the makeup and the, like, whatever. Like, you want like I have to wait. I want no. Okay, let I'll me do your makeup if you want. <laughs> no, no, no. I want to volunteer, and I want to get to that point where I'm so still that they like have zoned out, and they think that like you know, like oh, they're died? just doing whatever. And then I want to scare the crap out of them. Oh, you just want to be a jump scare at a haunted house. Yes. You're gonna be a haunt actor. Okay. No. Go work for. for we can we can make yeah. this happen, Caitlin. We got no, no, friends. no, no. Because somehow I would get more scared. I know. I don't do haunted houses. I don't. That's all right, Sam. No, no. Same. I you gotta went work the haunted house. That's where the fun is. I mean, yeah, but somehow, like, like I feel like at a haunted house, like the vibe among coworkers is probably that they do scare each other at times. No, really? No. <laughs> no. Do you work? What's there? the worst that could happen? Being stuck in a haunted house. You really gonna doubt my cred? Yeah, I am. The magician's son. You're gonna doubt my cred on haunted house I knowledge. I am. No, he has a whole... bird. <laughs> that doesn't help, Lexi. Well, technically, he doesn't have the bird. Sure, it's his dad's bird. Uh, the haunted house, like, okay, they're all there to scare other people. The job is to scare. You don't, I mean, yeah, sure, love what you do. But also, like, everybody else is expecting it. I was going to say, scare actors love their job. Yeah, but they, the whole, as scare actors, they know the scare is coming. So they're just like, oh, yeah, we're about to round the bend. Dude in the wolf mask is going to jump out here. That's okay. But what if you're, like, getting ready for work and someone scares you? 
Yeah, I'm saying like, like behind she, the scenes, like about. hanging out, like not doing the job. That's but, so like, much work, though. Okay, but like some people but they do it for a have living. nothing else to live for. <clears throat> That's true. Some people go through their lives and they just live for the Halloween season. It's a good season. It is a good season. Are you call me out. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm just saying that when I was, like, six or seven, my mom was, like, going back to community college, and they had a haunted house, and she needed to go, like, volunteer or whatever. Uh It was something. So my mom took us to this Halloween party. That was the main part. She told me and my sister that we could go through, like, the smallest haunted house. Like, looking back on it now, like, I am ashamed at how scared I was. Because, like, I guarantee if I walked through it now, I'd laugh. But I went through that thing, and I was so terrified. And at the end, I abandoned my sister, and she will never let me live it down. You abandoned your sister? Oh, I ran. Damn. Like, someone scared us, and she was being such a good big sister. Like, she was, like, you know, kind of in front of me. She was holding my hand. Like, she was being such a good big sister. And at the end, somebody scared us both. We both screamed, and I sprinted. I feel so much better about myself now. I absolutely left her behind. <laughs> My fight or flight kicked in. I fled and then yeah, turned around and went back. Scared. Oh, so I didn't go I back. Was, I found my mom. I this wasn't even Halloween. I was just at like a, I was like a six or seven or um, seven or eight at a friend's well, birthday. you had I'm already of done story. your karate class. <laughs> you had skills you could rely on there. So me and a few at the friend's party, it's like an overnight thing. And we're hanging out in the backyard and the dad like comes out and freak like chases us down but he comes from like a weird angle so it looks like just random dude just kind of came out of nowhere and started running at us and there's four of us we all took off running and i noticed the one john a regular on this show wasn't with us so i turned around and started sprinting back to get him (laughs) and then as i turned around started sprinting i was like oh it's it's the dad okay Oh my gosh, I was going to tell the story, but I was shamed because it happened freshman year of high school. <laughs> Please share. So I know. went to this place um, called Kavanaugh's, okay. and they had hay rides, th- like haunted hay rides. As you do. It's meant for children. Yeah. Like seven or eight. I was 14. Oh, Lexi. I was on the Did you jump ride. out of the cart? No, just wait. So I was on the hay ride. I could deal with it because we were in like a hay cage, so like it was fine. They were just up against there. I had my then boyfriend, you know, we were being all cute. We get to the thing. They drop you off in the middle of the woods and you have to walk through. Were you being cute with a bunch of seven-year-olds around? Like, is that really cute? No, there were like parents and stuff. So Uh it's fine. Shut up. (laughs) I was 14. Um, So we get there. We start walking through. We're halfway through. Something scares me. I piss my pants. Oh. I'm sorry. He's so nice. I la- she told me the story. I laughed my I ass off. Like, so I'm 14 with all of my friends and my current boyfriend, and I have to walk through the rest of this. You get to the end, and it's a bonfire, and the trailer has to come pick you up again. And I'm sitting there with pissed pants Aww. at 14 years old. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> They were all really kind about it. Do you so, want like, me to edit this fun. out? No, it's fine. Okay. I'm telling it for a reason. I'm not ashamed. Well, I, a little bit. But, like, <laughs> I just refuse to go back to haunted things now. Fair. So, but, like... <laughs> okay, I have a question, and you can you can decline to answer. How did you, like... Like, did you tell everyone? Like, did you... Like, were you just like... How you oh, survive my, Like, how did they... Okay, like, so my then best friend out? was there. And I was like, Jordan, I pissed my pants. And so I wrapped my flannel around yep. my, around my waist. There we go. And so I think she knew, and my then boyfriend knew. Minimize and the damage. No one else knew until my mom came to pick us up. And then when we got home, I was like, "Mom, I peed my pants." But what did your mom say? She laughed at me. There you go. And then I proceeded to like you know I figured my stuff out, cleaned up, and then I couldn't fall asleep that night. I turned on. Uh, a Barbie movie and had my fairy lights on and that's how I fell asleep with the lights on and a nice movie playing because I was so terrified and this is why I won't do scary things or watch scary movies anymore but yet Pride and Prejudice and Zombies that's not scary that's zombies Mm. I also love NCIS and like murder I love murder mystery I don't like horror I can do like thriller a little bit but I don't like horror alright I can do, like, suspense, but I don't like jump scares. 
fuck jump scares. I hate I have, jump scares. I have voluntarily gone to see one horror movie in the theater. It was scary stories to tell in the dark. And I I knew every single fucking jump scare that was going to happen. And it was basically two hours of me sitting there building up adrenaline in a fight or flight response that could not run and could not fight. I walked out of the theater with my hands shaking because I just built up that much adrenaline yeah. and couldn't put it anywhere. Like, okay, so that one movie where the deaf woman was in the woods and there was a murder. I left a birthday party because they put that on. Like, Fair. I called my mom. I sat behind the couch, wouldn't watch it, and I left. I cried at the Babadook. Haven't seen it. Uh, I didn't watch it. I was behind the couch. And yeah. I cried. Fair. Because it was spooky. Because he just goes, Babadook. It's spooky. Big spooky. <laughs> okay, that sounds funny. <laughs> okay, Babadook. like, it, and he's animated, and it's it's a weird... The Babadook is weird, and he's kind of a gay icon, but that's a different story. Okay. And then I... Because he's kind of, like, a cryptid. A okay. Bit. I don't know. And then I saw one thriller in a, in the theaters, and it was um, that one where they couldn't make sound. Oh, a Quiet Place. A yeah. Quiet Place. I saw that one in theaters, and I actually really liked it because I liked the story. So I really want to see number two, but I will only watch it at like ten a.m. Fair. That's and I need to watch it with a group of people. But the first one was great, and we watched it during the day, so like I was fine. Yeah. And that was, that's Thriller. There were no jump scares. You saw it coming. Yeah. Well, I guess because the, the fear in that one is entirely based on yeah. sounds. Like, it's like someone I was crunches still ter- on a bag of chips, yeah. you go, oh, shit. It's like, I was still terrified because, like, the entire thing was silent. Yeah. But, I just, no. No nice. spooky. My sixth grade, my best friend was born in October. It was her birthday party. It was before Halloween, so we're like entering spooky season of like all of this so they were like let's watch this one movie and first okay they the first movie we started was human centipede oh that's a bad choice i sat there on the couch with my how old was this sixth grade yikes yes (laughs) yeah no okay so we stopped it as a okay so first i was on this couch and i had like two pillows because i was like right it was like a kind of like L, like, curved L, like, couch. So I was, like, kind of right in that, like, nook of, like, the center of it. So I had, like, all the pillows. And I was just, like, on my little iPod touch, like, playing, like, Sally's, like, beauty salon (laughs) or something. (laughs) Like, I was not here for it. After, like, somebody, like, got snatched to a house or whatever. No. So they watched about half of it before. Oh, so you made it to the, like, horrible parts. Yes. And then stopped. As a collective group, the majority of us were, like, we can't watch this anymore. A couple of the girls, like really loved this in high school they like signed up to like audition to like be like extras in like another like movie of this like they loved this Ugh. like some of my like i don't know i mm-mm. human centipede is one of the most disgusting movies i've ever heard about i've it's, never seen it oh no, then no you haven't heard about the second one and i've seen like the pictures from the movie and second as, one is worse they yeah. use more people mm-hmm. Ugh. And no. at one point, a pregnant woman gives birth and then, like, runs her own kid over. It's horrible. Oh, my God. Yep, because she's so desperate to get away. Oh. It's just atrocious for atrociousness sake. It's bad. I haven't even seen it. I just read the Wikipedia article. Oh, my God. Yeah. See, the weird thing no. is I can do true crime. I can do murder mystery. I will watch... True crime shows till midnight. I will learn about Ted Bundy. I will learn about everything. Um, one of my favorite true crime stories about is about <laughs> animal necrophilia in, in Wisconsin. It was great. Um, <laughs> what? Kill me. <laughs> so this guy... Um, Don't was, tell me. No. <laughs> I did not ask you to tell <laughs> me. <laughs> no, this guy was really drunk. You heard me he wrong. Ended up, he ended up um, having intercourse with a dead deer in Ugh. the woods. Anyways, that's one of my, like... I don't know. Necrophilia is really cool to learn about. Why? And with know. that, Lexi was never back on the podcast. <laughs> you, like, I mean, I'm sorry, but I don't... We've hit some lows on this show. I, I In apologize. particular, James joking about being a man who lives in a dumpster and eats dumpster babies. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you just said that's funny. Oh, my favorite jokes to tell in middle school were dead baby jokes. You would be that kid. I was. I almost got kicked out of the YMCA because of it. Good grief. Okay, we have that one just more question. Right. Yeah, 
And I have opinions about this next question. Our last question this week. Single men, what size mattress do you sleep on? RJ, you should go first. Okay. I currently utilize a queen size mattress. The problem I have with it right now. One, I'm one of those people who like, I pick this like section of the bed I sleep on and that's all I use. I will toss and turn in that one area, but I will not move like an inch. Like I am on the edge of the bed, thre- like threatening to fall off, but I won't. I just rotate in that one spot. To the point where, like, All there's right. a very clear indent where that's my spot. <laughs> the problem I have right now is the bed is one of those ones where, like, the, the box spring thing is, like, built into the bottom, I think. Uh, so it's fine in terms of length and width. It's the height that is a problem with the sheets. So, like, the corners are all good, but the two sides are, like, pulled up a little bit from my turning and tossing. <laughs> just rotate your mattress. <sighs> that's, a whole, that's a whole thing, man. <laughs> I know. Do you want to go or do you want me to go? Okay, I'll go. Um, so, I feel like de- after you hit, like, your teen years, and, like, especially if you've moved out on your own, like, you should at least have a fold to a queen. Like, you don't need to go purchase a king. Like, you're probably not at that place. Like, why do you need that big of a bed? But, um, I just feel like if you've moved out on your own. What did you just own, say, Lexi? <laughs> I said, wow, I have low standards. I just feel like you should at least get a full. Like, it just feels more of, like, the adult move. Um, I will say I have opinions on the pillows. Quick question before we get to pillows. What is worse, a larger mattress on the floor or a smaller mattress on an actual, like, bed frame? Okay, so for me, that just depends on, like, the setup of your room. Like, I'm not about to judge you for just having your mattress on the floor. Like, where are you at in life? Like what else yeah. do you have going on like it just depends on like what's going on for you if you could clearly afford it like literally even just like the slab thing that you just like put just the mattress on like not even a box spring like yeah i'm fine without a box spring but like i feel like it, once you're in like an apartment type place for over six months to a year get at least a headboard guys don't buy headboards from what I've learned, because they yeah. don't feel the need for them. Like, okay, you don't The need only one. good headboard is the it's... one with the cubbies. Yeah, that's the one my parents have. Except for theirs has a mirror in it. I hate that. It's weird. But, like... What are you looking at me for, <laughs> Caitlin? I don't have a mirror. So, I said I have low standards <laughs> because my current boyfriend sleeps on a futon that's folded out. I mean, that's an okay high school bed. He, he has his associates. 21. I stand by what I said. I know. So I'm like, at least get, like, a real I feel so bad for your boyfriend. Mattress. We called him out so hard I this, know. I'm so sorry. Hour. <laughs> he probably won't hear this, but if he does, I love you. You're great. Um, but he sleeps on a futon. And, like, I'll feel, like, occasionally if you sit wrong on it, like, you'll feel the poles of the futon. Yeah. He has one pillow for Question. each of us. Is it a premium futon, or is it one of those, like, thin, wire? Oh, no, it's a nice futon. Okay, that's a that's It's, like, it's like, like, he has bed sheets on it, and, yeah. like, you know, it's... He makes it into, like, a really ni- a nice bed, but the, yeah. it's... Still it's a futon. a futon. So, my opinion is, like, at least get a mattress, and maybe a headboard, if you want to feel really put together. Like, what pref- if you want to live in a dumpster? Preferably minimum. Oh, then you don't even full. need a mattress. Yeah. Cardboard. Fuck it. I... It's like the Olympics. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Olympics. Ha- you didn't see that? The Olympics had cardboard beds. It was some. In Japan. Company or whatever. And, like, they strategically, like, made these beds and they're supposed to, like, support them. And, like, then there was something with it was the mattresses so it was that were, like. Mm. Yeah. But everyone made it the joke that it was so Olympians couldn't have sex. Because without would, breaking what? the bed. Because they would collapse. It was just I enough mean, to support them sleeping. <laughs> let's be real. The Olympians, at the Olympics, they have nothing else going on. They'll find a time and place. Oh, absolutely. Just let them do it. They're in a really stressful them, time in their life. They're really stressed. And some of the most athletically gifted individuals in the world are all being shoved into one city for, like, You three can't weeks. expect them to not get a little crazy i just want to hear a story about like two parents or well two olympians that went to the olympics had sex made a baby and then you know 15 years later that the kid goes olympics. to the olympics it doesn't it won't it's not i want they're it diluting to their abilities if they intercross that way 
Well, is they it, have to be restrained to their own objectives. Well, is it and two skiers? See, that's what I'm saying. It has to be. It has to be restrained to events only. If it's two slalom okay. skiers who have a baby, then he's really good at that, cross country skiing. Because I was slaloms. gonna say, what if that baby then goes to the Olympics for swimming? No. No, I just think that they have good <laughs> ath- like athletic gene traits yeah. that they could the kids pull from. Choose let's there. let's step back a moment. What's your thing with pillows? Oh, my thing with pillows. Okay, so like. At this point, you should have, like, a full or a queen or whatever. I feel like, like, there was something I saw, and I, it wasn't the original thing that sparked my, like, argument for this, but I will argue. They were like, if you walk into a guy's room and they just have one pillow, they don't have room for you in their life. <laughs> like, Damn. it was somebody, like, saying it, and they made some whole, like, That's argument. Point. But I will just say, like, I feel like you should have bare minimum, like, two pillows, because most people sleep with two pillows. If you sleep with one, like, fine, whatever. Throw it on the other half of the bed. Whatever you want to do. But I feel like if you're getting to that point where you're, like, getting into a relationship or, like, it's something, like, you're going to, like, have somebody there more often or whatever, like, you should maybe have, like, a spare pillow for them or two pillows or whatever. Like, doing that sort of thing, like, you need at least two and they cannot be, like, the most flattened out pillows that you've yeah. had for the last 20 years yeah. that were, like, hand-me-downs, whatever. Like, the pillow test, if you have your pillow on your bed and you fold it in half and you let go and it doesn't automatically bounce back into a flat shape, then your pillow is dead and you need to get rid of it and buy a That's new one. That's past dead. What, what if it like is if it's, super flat and it still, like, flops out because it's just dumb? <laughs> I was going to say, that's I cannot argue dead. against that. <laughs> but I do, I will say, like, if it's, like, f- I guess if it's supposed to be more, like, plush, and it, you fold it in half and it stays folded, then you need to, like, get rid of it. I will mm. say, that's the one thing that, like, with the whole bed setup with my boyfriend, he did right. He has two very nice, like, memory foam, like, hold-the-head pillows. Like, they're very nice Question. pillows. Do you guys run into the problem with the, uh pillowcases rotating around the pillow yes okay thank god it's not mm-hmm. just me yeah who doesn't i i, mean, I don't know the pillowcases that zip then you have a zipper on your pillowcase it still it rotates still around rotate. though it just oh, kind of yeah. like it's still no, yeah my current pillowcases other than my body pillow are rotated okay yeah. i just See, gotta like shake it out a few times i say i make my bed every morning so like i fix that every morning it never really makes it more than like a couple inches off of like being in line, but... It my seam of my pillow's in the middle. It didn't used to happen with mine, but that was also before I got, like, two nice new pillows, and now it just always happens. Yeah. That's fair. Alright. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode this week. Thank you both for joining. Of course. Thank You're you welcome. for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to the band Problem of Interest for letting us use the song Living in the Moment off the album Cross Off yesterday. You can find them on iTunes and Spotify. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you buy podcasts. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Better Buddies, where we post our meme Mondays and our icebreaker questions for you to answer. On Twitter, at Better Budcast, use the hashtag Better Buddies when you tweet about the show. Or our Gmail account, BetterBuddiesCast at gmail.com. You can send us fan art, hate art, fan mail, hate mail, declarations of love and or war, questions you want us to answer, or icebreakers you want to hear more about. And last but not least, be a better buddy. had the Met playing from the speakers and my freshman year I was on the end of the line and the speakers are on the edge of like where we are so the Met was going on and on and on and so like my left ear was right by the speaker and so the Met was just constantly going for you know 14 15 hours a week so you just busted your ear yeah a little bit it's just like the lowest thing like it's just like my left ear is more deaf than my right ear if Good. that's the correct I mean, technically. attribution of it. Because they made us like do a hearing test. I passed my hearing test. Just because you passed doesn't mean you don't have shitty hearing. <laughs> I Damn. have selective hearing. I'm just hearing. saying <laughs> everyone has selective hearing. Sometimes I don't want to hear other people that are speaking. <laughs>